He's also dealing with a lot of pressure mm -hmm. and how he deals with it. That's actually quite interesting to hear as well. And, Indeed. And, and fear not, even if you're fourth in this league, mm -hmm. next to getting, I mean, all these teams had uh, 10 wins in land. That's already $10,000 in the pocket. And hey. if you end fourth, aka last, you get 20000 You got already 30000 in the pocket. You're done. You're good. Wow. I mean, there's 90000 for a winner. You know, there's still more to be had if you want to. But, you know, there's nothing to scuff at. Why even play? Uh, let's just just forfeit. Just take the money. Go. <laughs> I'd do it. Easy money. Yeah, but that's because you, you won't win. Well, of course. Yeah, that's a really oh. good point. <laughs> mm. Well, as I ponder that, uh, <laughs> cheaper. <laughs> okay, we are going to go into the draft. Oh! We have our third game coming up here. And indeed, this is, this is, this is it. This is it! Someone's going home, baby. Someone's going home after this game. Imperial Escape, it is 1-1. Winner will face Alliance tomorrow in the lower bracket last round. And a loser, a loser goes home. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now I can speak bad. All right. Oh, 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 bad. Yeah, good lad. Great job, Ace. Thank yeah. you. We love... What a nice You know, we, we really do love escape gaming. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Aye, aye, aye. Well, same bands uh, escape using, of course, against Imperial that we saw them do before and that we saw Liquid do in their series. Drow, the, sure the, the OG, the same opening, Oga. the Imperial. Absolutely no reason to, to not take it in this, this meta. And escape, what are they open with? Ah, uh, escape, switch it around a bit and then follow through with uh, the Mirana. Again, another hero that they're great with because Yap can play and so can Koi. Yeah. yeah. Imagine they were anticipating the first ban on the Naga, and then the decision before the game was probably, do we pick the Warlock this time, or do we want to continue? Game 2, they didn't pick it. It got yeah. banned in the second stage, and we'll I mean, probably see things similar again. I kind of feel with this opening that if you're Imperial, you're still going to be a little bit worried about a Warlock pick for, for Escape, because, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's fantastic sure. with those two heroes. Starstorm, Caustic, Burrow Strike, exactly. with Fatal Bonds. I mean, it to be fair, anything with Fatal Bonds is good, but these sure. heroes, <laughs> definitely two that excel with, with having that uh, in their arsenal, so I, I want to see if Imperial pick it up themselves or, or ban it. Yeah. yeah, I would have to agree with you. I mean, uh, we saw yeah. the Marana eggs with Fatal Bonds. It's like your team doesn't even exist, and you know, it happens in a quarter of a second. It's horrifying, guys. It is. Uh, I think they just kind of recognize that the Warlock as a first pick wasn't as valuable as some of these other heroes, which they really want to get. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, last game it was second stage banned and probably again from Imperial. But... Keep of the light. I mean, uh. already I think that kind of lends escape gaming to start worrying again about the nation's profit. Uh, you're going to have this kind of global per, uh, potential split push with the, the recall and such. You're worried about maybe an MP or an... I guess obviously not I because the support's already done, but it definitely has to judge nature for profit. I, we saw Escape Gaming ban it out in game two. Obviously worked out well for them where they were able to get the win. Uh, we if might there's anybody that has nightmares of a nature's profit, it will be Escape Gaming from earlier today. Jonas <laughs> exactly. fans so <laughs> so. They've lost twice to they've it. They've lost, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the game one. Yeah. Not a lot of teams that they could have said they've lost twice to a nature's profit in one day in 2016. Yeah. And they ban it. Indeed. They're not going to use it. They, they just, you just ban it. The weak link. Get rid of them, please. Um, so now, escape. Uh, Sniper is still there? I mean, something that we we keep, didn't see in Purple Lab? Like, keep it up. And, uh, when's it going to happen? The Shadow Demon something that looks... Well, no, sorry. Two, two sports would be picked up. Um, what I needs guess to happen could... for a Sniper to be picked up? Like, what's the purpose uh, scenario? Because obviously so we've seen it mostly against ODs. Perfect scenario is the opponent picks an OD. Uh, they, uh, that, that's the perfect the Opponent scenario. picks an OD and they have no good yeah. gap closes for the Sniper. Um, would you go like a Mirana Sanking or Mirana Sanking is already gap good, good gap, gap close. This yeah. is not a great Sniper game. Just from what we're seeing. Sanking alone is great against the Sniper. He's early on with the Blink and then later on with the Ag Scepter. Yeah. He's always going to cause problems for Sniper. And then all like the elusiveness with the Sandstorm makes him harder for the Sniper to deal with as well. So mm -hmm. I think Sniper is very unlikely. That's a on the Legion. Uh, something that we saw, uh, obviously not win the last game, but yeah. that was certainly a, a dominant rate. And it was a Legion that wasn't winning a lot of duels, but uh, just the setup. And, right. And what he was able to offer in terms of pushing out lanes was, was definitely very scary. Just a strong presence overall. I mean, uh, you have to pick your entire thing around not getting caught out by that Legion, so that's just to get rid of it. Yep. And see what else comes up. I mean, I wonder, obviously, last time we saw the Keeper of the Light, and uh, we did obviously see Imperial pick up the Phantom Assassin. Yes. And that's not only good with the Cold, it's also great with the Oka Magi with that Bloodlust. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, SK and Marana, two heroes that have kind of a field day before PA gets a BKB. True. 
But I don't know. PA, you want somebody that you can kind of get on and stay on. Both those guys have pretty good escapes. So. And they both, yeah, they both have good escapes. And Sanking, just with the lockdown, all the magic damage. Yep. PA struggles against these heroes. You until you have BKB, you can't fight into them. So. Sure. Not not feeling the PA so much this game for Imperial. Uh, There's a lot of heroes I feel like that have been kind of taken out because of Sanking Marana. Sure. Sure. Maybe we'll have to go back for something a bit more stock standard, like the Luna type carry. I mean, I wonder even at this stage, do you? Think about banning out the clock, or yeah, do you just let? Uh, I mean, yeah, the wall of banners we talked about earlier. Is... Right. Yeah, I was wondering if they may look to pick it and run it mid again, but they it's escaped with the first pick coming. I mean, out. It's, I was gonna say jug oh, again. It, it's, error, error jug. It's just such a solid pick for escape. This will so, be the one millionth and third time Aaron's played jug. One I mean, of the heroes. If it ain't broke, don't fix that. I mean, he, they, 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 I'm sure they have must have a good win rate with that hero. Mm -hmm. So one of the heroes that Imperial actually got big with, or got known for, let's put it that way, is the Centaur, and um, it's actually pretty decent. That's true. Marana because they, the return actually hurts a lot. They did pick. It a couple of times in the qualifiers, and they, they, lost. they lost, so yes. they may have bad memories of playing Centaur kind of post the, the nerf to illusions and such. So Maybe I they don't can know work if they necessarily in a different way go for it offlane rather than as a core because I don't like it. As I mean, a yeah, I'm sure I has to joke a player, brilliant. Oh, okay. This is a, this is a nice replacement. I think that's going to be an ace bristleback, don't you? Good chance with the like Shaka bristleback, you yeah, have the yeah. instant double quill spray, it could be ace bristle into like a raid boss. Could be offlane as well with the ogre. That's I mean, kind of, oh, it's one of those flex that can actually be played in all three lanes as a core. Uh, it's definitely a core they want to get farm to. You can run in the offlane with support, stack up your ancients, and still get a lot of farm on this hero. So, uh, I, actually, I guess yeah, they want to try and put, put the pressure with uh, maybe against air on the juggernaut. Or, yeah, possibly. You know, again, it's one of those heroes that I mean, Imperial have these these players that are versatile and Ace could play it or has to Joker play. It. I think Imperial want to go into some tower pushing heroes now as well. That's like they've got very early game with the Bristol Coddle, Ogre, and all this, but they haven't got any good way of taking objectives, which is probably what they want to focus on with their fourth or fifth pick. I don't know too much about uh, Sonic the Snot Hog here, but uh, isn't it bad if he's against guys that have escapes like this? I mean, uh, he, yeah. doesn't he have trouble catching them? He gets caught a little bit, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, he gets a lot of move speed. He, he can't chase yeah, down. He's got move speed. The thing is, it's also like, don't, here it's like Sanky Marana have issues killing a, a Bristle because they don't do, I mean, it, they do damage, but once, once you have Vanguard plus Hood, you're like, it's kind of like you build it like the Centaur, you just take up a ton and then you're unkillable. So if you're Sanky or Marana with all your magic damage, you're like, wait, that's a Bristle, we're not killing him. Uh, yeah, I'm picking up the, the, the Bane again. Again, hey. this is definitely one of those heroes that not a lot of teams are using at all, but Escape Gaming, they made it work last game. And uh, looking to make it work again for Cinder, and kind of just going back, it, it always was one of Sin's, Cinder and heroes. Not many good disables to stop the Fiend's Grip, only the Fire Blast right now, which isn't the easiest thing to get off if Bane's in the back lines. I mean, I wonder if there, is there anything that Imperial can kind of draft to help them uh, against the Blade of Fury and TP out? Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. Out. Game. Okay. A lot of great eggs. I mean, have you ever seen a Bristleback eggs in it's, your entire life? Uh, it's pretty good. It, yeah, seen I have it? seen it. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not always great to it's, build on him directly because there's so yeah. many other items that you need. Of course. Weird build up. You'll, you'll take the free eggs. Oh, it's sure. Yeah. sure. It gets rid of that cast like where you have to select a target. It just like the AoE go it makes it a lot more spam bonafide. It's pretty nice. But wow. you have to first get to the point where Alchemist is able to achieve uh, oh, a yeah. moment where he gets eggs for other people. And right now it looks like Escaping has uh, has mid game. As their, as their go time. For sure. Yeah, but uh, Imperial could play maybe a more fighting style Alchemist. That's something they've done more of rather than the Radiance Octarine type Alchemist. So perhaps we see them. I, I could all that my time. Like with Acid plus Goo, there's lots of chase with the Goo slow. You bloodlust an Alchemist. He gets points in the stun. He starts hitting you. Like there's a I lot mean, of mid game potential for, I, bo for both teams, really. I'd kind of like to see Imperial just slip the, have the Ace on the Bristleback safe lane and, and slip in a Hester Joe Slider to finish it off. Oh, and, yeah. and then build the fighting yeah. Alchemist. And then go, go. Or, alternatively. You could still put the the pistol back in the off lane, maybe still go back for the PA, uh, but the Razor ban actually from Escape Gaming is something that did I feel is it's not necessarily at least something that we see Imperial do a lot, but obviously Escape Gaming they've got the info, and maybe it's something that Imperial have pulled out in the past, and something that maybe works necessarily very very good against this draft, and of course, I guess it can definitely work against a, a jug with the chase down potential, stealing that damage through the Blade Fury, and what uh, they may have in mind to pick up in yeah. their fifth as well as yeah. their mid. Uh, thinking that the Marana is uh, going to be support. Yeah, that's like good. A, yeah, good chances of Marana support. I, I'd maybe wonder if that leans towards Koi for playing DK. 
DK is hot. Doesn't do like it doesn't You've really shut get... down the Alk maybe so much. Yeah. I think more like a Shadow Fiend type hero. He's played a bit of the Shadow Fiend. They banned an AA, yeah, so they're thinking thing is Quake for Marana. Yeah. But I could see a Shadow Fiend pick being possible, saying Quake was pulled out here and there. Um, but uh, we'll see what Imperial want to do. This is very this open revealing draft. pick. Yeah, the third core. We'll, yeah. we'll start to, to see for sure what their lanes are. Oh, uh, is the so it's going to be the safe lane. It's going to be Ace Bristol. It must be. Yeah, Ace yeah. Bristol, offlane clock. Mid Alchemist. I mean, to be fair, I want to say Bristol is one of the heroes that even Baby Knight can pull out in the mid lane. Yeah, absolutely. and then put the, the out stage like that as well. Hey, yeah. you mentioned it. Hey, great job. All right, I. Ooh. Yeah. Fiend's a good hero. Lots of the minus armor helps a bit yourself. Uh, it's just a good hero to kind of sit back, help kite the Bristol back pretty well. Matches up well against the Alchemist mid. It's a hero that actually has burst damage against an Alk, which is kind of essential. Marana. You don't have burst damage until you hit like Ags, so yeah. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna be going home? Who's gonna be going on tomorrow to face Alliance? I wanna hear it. You first. It's pretty darn even. I mean, uh, both these teams have been doing incredible, but in a real quick, I gotta go with an Alchemist. I mean, uh, if he gets away from you for just a little bit, he'll ball out of control. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm believing the Shadowfiend. I'm gonna go escape on this one on the draft. Uh, I'm gonna say Imperial win if they do the battle Alk build. I want to see that coming out from Baby. Now. I don't, don't want to see your armlet into to Radiance, but uh, I feel that's probably likely with that AA ban. They want to build the armlet, okay. but we'll see. I'm interested to see how he builds. We're gonna find out what he's gonna build because it is time for our final match: Woo! Escape Gaming versus Imperial Game Three with Annie and Fogged. Prepare for battle. Thank you very much, panel. This is it. This is elimination. One of these teams will not be around tomorrow. Lower bracket semifinal. This is where it gets real fogged. What are you thinking for this game? I mean, what more could we ask for? Game three, at both these teams have been playing for like or at least here for about 12 hours. They're definitely, <laughs> you know, they're definitely feeling the exhaustion a bit. I think this is going to be, I, I, don't, I can't really think of another word right now, but it's going to be a bit of a shit show, I think. <laughs> gonna be, they're going to be running at each other a little bit, but uh, I think, uh, I, I do like Escape's lineup. I think this is a cool Shadow Fiend pick. It matches up well versus the Alchemist, like Parker was saying. Um, and just overall, I, I mean, I, I, I love watching Yapsor on uh, this Murana. He's had some great success on it with them in the past, and they have, a mul they have multiple different ways to set it up, and... Uh, I'm not the, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of uh, the, the clockwork in this game. So. Yeah, Bane Marana, the old school combo. Uh, I was walking past Imperial between games, just walking around, and I saw Noya, and that was the face of a man who just got Naga Siren. He looked so tired, so I think Imperial looking to make this one short and sweet. They get the Alchemist, but like Owen was talking about, there's the potential that this is just full fighting Alchemist online a lot earlier than you'd expect a normal Alchemist to be. I think we're going to see the all armlet radiance. Oh, baby. <laughs> I, I think it's just, you know, it's a super standard safe build. You know, if you, whenever you, if you stray away from it, it can just, it can hurt you a little bit too much. But we'll see what ends up going down. They have the Ogre starting in the mid lane with Baby Knight on the Alchemist, like we mentioned. Has to Joe, obviously, starting with Clockwork Bottom. And, yeah, cool lanes. Coddle Bristle top. So a little bit of a change up from what we're used to seeing, obviously. Yeah, Coddle Bristle is going to be uh, a bit interesting here. What's going to be the, the pace of that? Do you have Rise kind of frontlining an Imperial, or uh, rather Ace just soaking experience going for you know, a little bit of gold? Or is he going to be trying to be really aggressive here and maybe trying to get some kills onto Trixie? I think that he just wants a free farm here. You know, it's just like... He's, he's going to pressure, but they can't really zone a, a sanking too well. You know, it's, it is what it is. You can just kind of like run at him and hit him a bit, but he's just going to soak experience for the time being. And I, I feel like Trixie could play a little bit more aggressive here, because there's not really any kill potential between the two of these. Here, Aesop's Shocker will be used. And yeah, Rise is already starting the stacks up. So this is definitely what they're... They already have a game plan now. So they want to get massive stack on this hard camp for this Bristleback to just accelerate his farm in a massive fashion, so... Yeah, we saw Trixie on a Sand King on the very first game of the day. Uh, he built up Arcanes and started to max out that Sandstorm, and uh, I know there were people that were not too fond of that. What do you feel about how Sand King should be building in this game? I, I mean, I think it's just like the standard, you know, you want to get a couple levels in Caustic, get your stun, you pressure the lane a bit with it, but yeah, he's he's already being, I think he's being a little bit too defensive already, honestly, he could be hitting the creeps a bit, not really worrying, but now he's already getting stacked up by this, and he actually might just go down. Oh, he's going to burrow strike his way to freedom. I don't think Ace can catch up with him here, he's got quill sprays, but... Breaks the salve. Yep. Oh, Keeping him on his toes. 
Trixie. He'll still be alive. He's got himself uh, one magic stick charge if he needs, but just going to tango himself up and maybe fly in a couple more pieces of regen. Yeah, he got put in a defensive position. Just, I think he's playing a little bit too safe. Just, I think he could have been up a little bit at level one and then gets a couple caustics on the creeps or just like gets get like a last hit or two. But he's just playing purely for the experience game. And Rise is doing a great job of just, yeah, still stacking. So two minutes, he has a triple stack at the hard camp. Perfect for the Bristleback, getting him that acceleration. Mm -hmm. I also love the way uh, Imperial playing their mid. They're keeping the Ogre there. You yeah. talked about Quakefa on a Shadow Fiend being a really great matchup against the Alchemist, so just keeping the extra bit of support that they need. Yeah, I mean, he's struggling very hard against this Ogre Alchemist dual lane. Alchemist 15 and 5, Shadow Fiend 2 0. Really? He's got two last hits there. That's something. Yeah, they really want to, you know, they don't want to put Juggernaut in a 1v1 versus Clockwork, but I think that the Bane might even might even benefit a little bit more from oh, going in mid lane. Look at that early level in Concoction, just really keeping Quikefa down. So this may be more of the Fighting Alchemist, but we'll see. He's just going to be doing what he can to keep Quikefa at bay. I mean, Shadow Fiend does need a lot of farm to be impactful here. He needs his items. He just can't go in completely bare bones and rely on his base damage to get things done. Maybe these are the heroes that we saw versus uh, Liquid, right? We saw the Alchemist and the Ogre Magi mm -hmm. just chain dive him over and over with a couple levels early in stun. It's it's good because of how susceptible Shadow Fiend is. He's so squishy, pretty slow. You know, it's pretty easy to catch up to him when you have when he's ignited up, when you have Bloodlust, and if he gets uh, locked down, they can dive towers pretty easily with the Ogre Magi. So, cool little approach there. Um, yeah, I think Gabe probably wanted to help him out a little bit more, but Yapsor's in position to go for a courier snipe here if they don't upgrade it right away. Yeah, he was looking. He was looking for it earlier too, and it was just hobbling through top lane. Yeah, they drew. They drew lines in their own jungle. Imperial just drew like a, a little line thing like this. They're like, okay, Murana's in our jungle somewhere. We're not sure exactly where he is, but he he's lingering. He's he's doing Murana things. Mm -hmm. Murana's found a bit of experience too. Already level two and a half, so not going to be completely starved out. Has that panic leap if necessary. Uh, up to in the top lane, Trixie holding on to that skill point. Uh, he's going to be almost level three, but just sitting with the one point in Burrow Strike. Hopefully, a level or two in Caustic is coming his way. Yeah, I mean he's he's just soaking experience. He's just purely he's not playing like a pressure lane at all. He's just 100% soaking experience. So definitely gonna. Hurt him a bit in the money aspect, but he should be doing kind of okay in the XP aspect. But he w he won't have the same uh, start, obviously, as a Clockwork, because Clockwork naturally is able to hog the waves and always like he does. You know, it's very hard to get like massive kill potential, even with just like Bane Jog. Even though you have like the sleep into spin, he shouldn't really be put in a position to die to that. And with boots and a fairy fire, he has quite a lot amount, quite a high amount of sustain and mobility. Mm -hmm. Down in this bottom lane, escape. They're running their. Uh... Cinder and Era combo here. Era going to be back on the Juggernaut, a hero he's very clearly comfortable with. Uh, how is this Juggernaut game going to differ from the other ones we've seen today? Uh, I mean, I don't think it'll differ too much. They they play it like I mean, Slacks love saying it. Era played a million, played has played a million games of Juggernaut. This this shouldn't be so different. Mm -hmm. He's been doing like the standard, uh, you know, yeah, Manta build into Defusal pretty much every game. Maybe throwing, I think he threw in a Blink Dagger after the Manta one of the games. Uh, was it the last game? I'm not sure. There's been a lot of Dota. <laughs> There's of been a lot of Dota today. We've been casting for 12, 13 hours. Yeah, a lot of Era Juggernaut today too. So it's a little bit confusing to mix up all the games, but yeah. Uh, we did see the Yapsar actually drew a line. So even though the game's paused, they're already like having some ideas that they want to do. Yapsar drew a line like like uh, around like the tier two. I, you, I guess you guys can't see mine, obviously, but nope. <laughs> yeah, he drew a line moving like toward the bottom lane. So he wants to make a rotation to kill this Clockwork because Clock's getting good experience. So killing. Obviously, an offlaner who's getting good experience is always super beneficial to your supports. Mm -hmm. Clock is easy enough to kill in lane. He doesn't have a whole lot of escape tools until he picks up his hookshot at level 6. He does have his brown boots now, so we can kind of scurry away from anything. But uh, maybe a you know, nightmare into arrow will definitely catch him off guard. So we'll see if Yapsor is going to land that, or if he's going to go in for this courier snipe. Definitely something he would be keen on. See what he does. We'll find out if he sees all the courier. Does he see it? He does. He's moving in. They have the upgrade instantly, so they're good. So he's just like, all right, well... Effort made. Oh. So we are going to have uh, Quikefa again, just taking a concoction, but he's he's just trying to work on his farm here. He's found himself seven last hits now. Not ideal, obviously, but still getting something done, progressing in some way. Meanwhile, Clockwork trying to secure some of this neutral farm for himself down bottom. Bane trying to keep him controlled is going to go ahead with the Nightmare, but there's going to be no Marana Arrow to follow up. Era, he's going to be going in. They're trying to get this Clockwork as low as possible. He's just going to TP out, not going to take any risks here and be that first blood. Nice play. Uh, Yapsor also, uh, I don't know if Trixie or who identified the fact that they're stacking that hard camp so much. Yapsor actually runs up there and he's starting to arrow the big creeps in it, so... Taking away a little bit of the farm that would be coming out to the Bristleback. Just being, just being a nuisance, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Clockwork helping out there with some rocket flares. Now Yaps are uh, going in, trying to help help something get started. But Block it up. He's got the ward there for the vision. Blocks the camp. Doesn't get spotted by the ogre there. Cheeky little spot there for him. And now he's like, oh, look. Can I run another creep? <laughs> oh, he's able to get himself down to the low ground, but does get stunned. Yeah, I mean, he's got his arcane boots in a moment. So, very good for him. And he's just, yeah, he's just being annoying, you know, taking the stack from them. They're like, this little punk. <laughs> Taking my farm. Back in towards the mid late, Baby Knight has got himself just one point in Grievel's Greed, so definitely going for that more aggressive build. He does have a double damage rune in this bottle. If they're able to catch the Shadow Fiend off guard, maybe they can make something happen, but it is still very early in the game for the Alchemist to start raking in kills. No first blood spilled just yet. Looking at overall vision, uh, it's going to be a bit lacking. You've got a Radiant Ward in that mid lane is going to get pinged out. you got a Radiant Ward down in this bottom lane, just about to expire. Dire, well, they're a little bit lacking on vision themselves. Yep, not really, uh, nothing really going on in all three lanes. They're just kind of like evenly oh. getting space. Like Hester Joe's maybe a little bit ahead of the Sand King, but now mid. Everyone's grouping up. There is going to be an arrow connecting. They time it correctly. The Ogre is stunned up. The Alchemist, though, looking to make a defense. It is going to land onto Koikva. Oh, we Noya go. getting so oh. low, but the uphill miss. The okay. arrow finally secures the first blood. Yapsor able to get a nice little boost in gold there, boost in impact, but oh, that was cutting it way too close. Good rotation from Sind. Yeah, definitely. Getting, uh, getting the first blood is definitely important, and <laughs> it definitely uh, smoothens out Koikva's lane a bit. Relieves the pressure just a tiny bit, but at the same time, bottom lane has to Joe getting Omni Slash and spawn, and he actually gets taken out solo by Era. Nice play there. Yeah, it costs Ella, Era all of his mana, but still worthwhile. Back to the mid lane, Baby Knight getting picked on, just a couple arrows to the back, but of course he is feeling good. He's almost level 5, and sooner or later he'll find himself with that chemical rage. He might get rotated around on here. He's going to be d uh, double damaged up. It's an ambitious try for escape. Can they actually get this done? Just going in with the right clicks, Baby Knight channeling up an unstable concoction. It looks like Cinderin might actually get uh, the crap end of the stick there, punished by the rotations in from Imperial. Yep, he... Obviously, yeah, the level of concoctions become, is very useful in this type of matchup. Obviously, like we mentioned, Shadow Fiend's quite weak in the lane. He has, you know, he has raises, but he's very fragile, so he can die to a couple little combinations of that. And Baby Knight actually finds himself a regen rune. That's very, lo very lovely to <laughs> just spam out Acid Spirit for that and just spam out a couple stunts, as he's been doing in the lane of pressure, but... How's Trixie doing? Level 4. Oh, oh, Koifa! Could be in some trouble there. Arrow gonna buy some time. Alchemist is gonna go in, stuns himself, and now there's gonna be some damage coming out. Bane with the brain sap to try to buy themselves some time. The nightmare as well. They don't have mana for the raises here, so it looks like Shadow Fiend is not able to actually go in and finish anything off. He's just gonna get stunned by the ogre. It looks like Clockwork sends in a good luck flare, but there's gonna be no blood spilling here, even though it's a three on three engage. Yeah, nice little disengage, Koifa. Not having his bottle on him, not having any uh, extra mana sustain. 90 mana raises, quite costly. Did not have enough to clean up the alchemist kill or go for the ogre kill. But now he's got his bottle cleaned up on him, filled up. He's going to refill it as well with the courier again. Trixie, might get surrounded upon here. He's they're going on to Noya. They're going to burrow strike him up, but the rest of Imperial are ready to engage on this. Ace is going to be moving forward. He's got the goo. He's got the quills. Noya, it might end up burning down. Will end up going down, but can Ace find anything in return? Cinderin gets low. Will get picked off, and now Ace, he's just charging after everyone. He's got the boots. He's got himself a vanguard, so he ain't scared of a couple tower shots. He's going to give up the chase and settle for a little bit of damage onto the Tier 1. Radiant structures are fortified. His mango continues the pressure. Obviously, with chakras on top, it's very good. And uh, nice. Yep. So actually wants to alleviate the pressure from the catapult. Arrows it up so it slow down the tower pu tower push. Yeah, I'm just moving forward. I mean, you, you've got Trixie sitting here thinking about Burrow striking in, but at this point, your bristleback is so tanky. Look at him eating these tower shots eight minutes in and barely feeling it. Yeah, definitely the benefit of having a bristle short lane, being able to clear that. A decent stack that they had there, and he's getting like pretty much every little lane CS. This is a you know, this is a very imperial-esque thing to do when they were running the <laughs> centaur, centaur short lane a lot of the games, and now they're. I mean, this one they figured out one out. They're, what are you gonna do the? We're gonna do the bristle back as well. There it goes. That's gonna be a tower down. First tower of the game secured in favor of Imperial, and it seems like this top lane has gone well now. Back to the mid. Gape, they're still having a little trouble getting their Shadow Fiend enough farm. I mean, it's almost 50 last hits on Baby Knight, almost 40 on the Shadow Fiend, so he's going to be dipping off, looking for some neutral farm to try to pad his wallet a little bit. 
They're splitting a lot of experience, both of the, these two heroes, the Alchemist and the Shadow Fiend oh, with down the bottom arrow. sitting there. He can spin himself away, it's not gonna be too goopy. He's just gonna go for the TP out, but Ace, he might actually prefer this. Oh, had it been one second later, he would have had that cool spray to finish him off. But in this case, Juggernaut is able to get back to base safely. That does allow for Bristleback to get some free push onto this bottom tower, though, mid lane. This is where it's all going to go down. Escape being herded behind their tower. Imperial getting so aggressive already so early on in the game. They've got the hook shot now from Hesta Joe. So you might be thinking about trying to go in for something aggressive here. Just going to go try to rotate towards bottom lane. All five Imperial heroes very focused on structures right now. Yeah, there's making the moves. I like this move by Ace. I thought someone... Okay, good. I was about to say. I thought someone on Imperial would go top and at least try to like take the farm and maybe pull the wave back so Trixie doesn't get so much. They sent Noya up there and yeah, Ace just... Continues this pressure on the tower, and he's farming double. You know, he's pulling the creep wave into the neutral camp, so he gets like that little surge of bonus money and experience. Has to Joe getting some information. Yeah, so spots him with that ward on the high ground. Obviously, has to Joe is just gonna run at him though and just be uh, be annoying. Oh, he takes, takes a little, little pony. All right. Nice gold going in. Let's take a look uh, up top here as we've got Noya just sitting behind the tower. Era just bopping away at it, but Ogre can definitely not show his face right now. He would get picked off pretty easily. You know, I, I see this and I think of exactly what Matamba Man said in his interview. You go to my you go to my lane, I go to your lane. <laughs> it's just like it's the switch up. And Bristleback goes bottom, Era goes top. It's just that, oh. that little change up. And now we do see a port coming in. Baby Knight just wants to alleviate the pressure off the tower. And they will be able to do so with the acid spray wall. They can't really push Ace off of that bottom tower as easily. Yeah, I mean, Ace can just sit there. He's cutting the wave. He's taking a full duration of tower shots. Now another wave going to be coming in. This bottom tower is going to go down, and that's a pretty key Roche control point down. Yeah, definitely. And he's... I mean, he's going to be so tanky. The Centaur build he usually does is what? Like oh, the Vanguard lane. mode. And it's pretty good versus uh, Escape's lineup as well this game. This is where it's going to be going in. You got a smoke on two. The Bane Marana coming in. Noya going to pop the smoke. There is going to be that Omni ready to go on Era if necessary. They're going to burn the Alchemist right away before there's a chance to react. Now Noya just going to be bloodlusting up the Bristleback. Bristleback is angry. He's ready to chase, but Cinderin, not having any of that, goes for a quick nightmare on the back line. Era is going to take a little stun, but he should be A-OK. -okay. Yeah. Oh, and it looks like, okay, I forgot about that. He, he he likes to go for the boost to travel first. Sometimes he gets the hood first. Oh, oh the nice hook. hook. Connects, Era, he's just now spinning for his life, realizing, uh-oh, he is in some trouble. His mana starts to get burned down. He pops the healing ward. Can he actually get out of this? He's got the phase boots, but the goop, it's slowing him down. A couple more bops will be enough for Bristleback to score his second kill of the game. And Windlace, boots to travel now on the Bristle. He is, uh, that mobility with Bloodlust, he's got 512 movement speed with a couple stacks of Warpath. Yeah, he's going to be top of the net worth chart there with his alchemist. There's going to be the Keeper of the Light dragging him to his side. Let's see a, a mid gank going on. They're trying to keep some pressure up onto the Marana and at least take out this final tier one tower. That could be a great objective for Imperial. I love the oh, double quills. Shocker magic with quills. It's so <laughs> enjoyable to watch. Yeah, Ace is doing a lot of damage there. Maxed out points in quill spray now, uh, as well as bristle back. So you don't want to be attacking this guy from the back. He will just start to wreck you. Yeah, I mean, he's so tanky. He will, I mean, I was mentioning it before. He, he'll probably go back for the hood. That's his centaur build that he likes to do a lot. He's played the Bristol a Cinderin. couple times as well. He's only level 5, so he doesn't have that Fiend's grip. That would sure be front. something you like. And now they are going to be able to do some damage from the front. The Burrow's trying to hold him in place, but oh look how God. much damage the Quill Spray does. Marana never had a chance, man. I mean, like, he procced, I think, two Quills off of his Bristol back, and then he used the first Quill initially, then he gets Shockered afterwards, so he gets a double Quill after, so it's like six stacks almost instantly on the Marana, just, wow, yeah, bursted him down almost instantly, that was, that was fun. I mean, it was fun for us, I'm sure the Marana was not having such a great time. Come on. <laughs> Everyone's like, wow, double Quill, that's so cool. <laughs> I'm sure you say that in your pubs. <laughs> no one picks those heroes. <laughs> All right, so mid lane, there is going to be another defense escape. Again, they do not want to let their tower advantage go away so soon. Imperial are very intent on getting these structures, and it looks like escape may have to back off. There's just too much damage coming in, and look at this tower go. And that means the Roche pit is almost assuredly in Dyer's control right now. Yeah, taking out all three tier ones this early is... Oh, huge. the hook connects! What a shot there from Hasta Joe. There's going to be a self nightmare up from Cinderin, but uh, he's just buying time here. I, not even time to buy a TP scroll for himself. He's just super dead. I like how they're so keen on defending their towers, too. Oh, initiation back in. Trixie going to be channeling up the Epi. He's going to be going forward. A lot of damage coming down. The Star Storm from the Marana will connect. And now Omni to follow up. They're getting the kills. Rise. Looks like he may be going down as well. Not able to escape the spin of the Juggernaut Era under the Moonlight Shadow. Should be able to escape to freedom. Trixie, though, he's going to get snotted up. The arrow does stop the Bristle back in his tracks. And it looks like Baby Knight will think better of re-engaging. So all in all, escape actually turned that fight into their favor pretty handily. 
Yeah, very nice Moonlight Shadow there. Actually saves Zara in the back line. He was getting chased up by the Bristleback, but yep, definitely nice pick up for them. They saw the Bristleback go top. They saw a moment, like a moment of moment of chance for them to try to go. The Cottle relocate, uh, recalls the Bristle into the fight, but yeah, he gets kited and nice little moves. But I, I really like how keen they are and just like, like, we're not losing towers. Ace is just like, I have boot to travel. I'm running top. I'm running at Turks not letting him pressure. Uh, Trixie is just going to bail out of this. I mean, there's been so much space created for Ace right now. He's going to be sitting still at the top of the net worth chart. Uh, the Alchemist hasn't even caught up. He only has a point in Greeble's Greed, so definitely not going for that ultra farming build. He's got himself an S and Y. How do you feel about that Alk build? He didn't. He didn't go for the Radiance. I mean, they want to go for this, uh, this fighting build, this fighting uh, game, this fighting tempo. I mean, it's to each their own, you know? If you want to play it a different style, by all means, go ahead. I, I think... For the most part, the Armlet Radiance build is much more like, stable, but I think the SNY build can work, especially when you have like such a good lead. So, yeah, why I think not? We're, we're 14 hours into the day. I think Imperial are looking to make this one short and sweet, come online as quickly as possible. No more 90-minute games for them. Now, Era going to be wandering through the jungle. Has the Joe. Oh, he slips right past that arrow. Just going to cogs himself. Those are some safety cogs right there. He almost walked into that. That would have that would have sucked for him, for sure. Dude, he, he like got breezed by that thing. The hair on the back of his arms got burned off. Yeah, he actually had to go for this uh, max rocket flare bill instead of getting any extra points in battery assault. So he's got like, usually you see him like a uh, clockwork being able to run around and get like solo kill potential on the supports, but it's just the bane, you know, Mirana can always leap out of it. Everybody else has a pretty good way of being able to escape from it. So he just wants to be spamming the rockets out, getting as much vision and information on the map as possible. And he, he did struggle a bit in that offlane, so. Quake for making his way up top. Looks like that top tower is going to be a priority. It's pinged out by Imperial. They don't want to let this thing go down without a fight. Again, every structure brings escape closer to your base, which is not what you want when you've got the, the siege damage of a Juggernaut, a Marana, Shadow Fiend, so Imperial, they really need to prioritize keeping these structures up, and so far they've been able to do so. Yep. Ace goes for an Echo Saber rather than his usual build that we've been seeing, but I, I think this is something that he does on Bristleback every time he plays it, so not too much of a shocker to see him go for his type of standard, uh, his type of build that he likes to do, so. Alchemist picks up another double damage rune. Bristleback gonna get recalled towards the Roche Pit. It looks like they're ready to go in, they're ready to secure a fight advantage. And, yeah, I mean, DD and Medallion. With the Alchemist building the way he is, I think Imperial can definitely try to take a five-man team fight now. Scan comes in from the Dire, make him turn. No one's waiting on that high ground. It looks like Escape. Either they're not keen on this or they're taking the long way around. Yeah, this is a. I, I mean, I don't know if Miracle is the one who like 100% invented it, but I know Miracle was one who like on OG he started bringing back the like S and Y into Solar Crest and Blink and Sol, uh, Sh Shadow Blade on the Alchemist. So this is a kind of cool, different approach that some people do take. Oh, escape! They go in for a scan and they will catch out Noya on the Ogre walking through uh, the Radiant Jungle. But again, there's not really much you can do with it. Now you've got yourself a uh, Aegis on the Bristleback. At this point, I mean, even without the Aegis, Bristleback is so hard to kill. You've got to find a way to initiate it on him from the front. And by that point, you've already got Clockwork cooking onto you, separating you from the herd. Oh, mid lane, we're going to have Trixie go ahead and try to channel up that Epi. There's going to be a stun from Baby Knight popped out onto him. He's going to be burning so low. They bring in the dust. One more smack kills off the Sand King, that epicenter barely did anything as Baby Knight just regens back to full health almost immediately. Was that the, I think that was the first reveal of the Blink 2, right? And yeah. he just got it too, so he uses his epi and I think it was a bit of miscommunication there. Maybe like we said, it's been a long day for both these guys. Yapsor the seemed to be a little bit off the mark with the arrow there. I don't think he was even ready for that epicenter to come out. So Trixie maybe jumping the gun a little bit, but still we don't know what's going on with the communication anyway, so. Yeah, both teams probably just a little bit ready to go home here. But uh, they've got one more game, and it's all down to this. It's all on the line. Their dream hack, their dream league journey is one of them's going to end here. Yeah, I, I like looking at the wards right now and bo for both teams. They have like these uh, mirror wards, I guess you could kind of say. Like Imperial has four war or two wards in the enemy jungle and one in the enemy ancients and on a river, while <laughs> Escape has the exact same thing. They have a middle ward, they have a high ground ward, and then they have two deep jungle wards. So it's, it's kind of funny. I don't know. <laughs> It just looks kind of like, you know, it's like an exact mirror if you cut it across and where the position that they are. Yeah, I mean, you can tell where these teams need to see, where they need to see who's who's coming in, who's rotating. Now our Alchemist finishes up that full Solar Crest. He's already sitting on 1,200 gold on top of that. I mean, what do you complete on this Alchemist if you're going for this kind of build? Uh, I, I mean, it depends on what they want the Bristol back to go. He's going for, like, this Basher type build, so maybe we're going to see the Alchemist going for more, like, Auras. Maybe he'll go for, like, the AC next. So, I mean, we'll see what he likes to do. It's, it's it, from player to player, it, it definitely changes from from game to game. It can change as well. It's it's really all in depending on what how he feels in this in this situation. 
Shadow Fiend is sitting back. He's found himself almost 3k gold. He's been farming up these ancients, just trying to work on the neutrals, trying to push out the lanes without being too cocky about it. So Escape have, have stopped the bleeding right now. They're not giving up any more kills. Imperial, though, they're still feeling very confident invading the escape territory. Noya's, re Noya's like, guys, I'm here. I'm ready to break the smoke. I'm doing my job on Omega. Oh, yeah, he's, he's just making circles. He's just pacing around. Tank the gank. <laughs> That's his job, man. He's been doing a good job. He's got himself nine armor. This dude, his regen's great. Right now, his armor is great. You've got Alchemist, who's feeling unkillable as well. And oh, here, we're going to have initiation on the mid lane. Fiendsmere coming in. Short range arrow as well. Ace, he's getting low, but they can't even kill him with all these spells committed. He's still got the Aegis, even if he were to drop. And now there's going to be a hook shot in. They've separated the Bane from his pack. Cinderin, unfortunately, will not survive for the rest of this fight, and it looks like Imperial, they found the momentum they need to really go in and start cracking this game wide open. Yeah, man, Escape's lineup doesn't really have the most uh, <clears throat> most damage for that Bristleback. They full duration Fiends grip him, and they're hitting him in the face. A couple of them were hitting him in the side anyway, but yeah. Okay, so he does go back. He goes back for the blink anyway, so yeah. he's doing like the, the miracle build like I was kind of mentioning. At least, I, I think it was Miracle who did it, so... Master Joe getting very, very close to that blade mail. Maybe looking for a hook shot onto Trixie here. He's got that hook shot cooldown, so maybe he's just going and trying to keep some eyes. Make sure they keep Sand King in check. Still on cooldown for another 30 seconds on the hook, yeah. but. They've got keep worth the light. Can we go and uh, land a blast? Let's go far there. <laughs> now nah, they're just going to let Trixie do Trixie things. He's, again, starting a new life in the trees there. Up top, you've got Noya trying to keep back the push from these Shadow Fiend Illusions, but that shouldn't be anything they can't deal with. Quakeva, though, he's going to be Shadow Bladed up. Can't even go for a solo pick on the Ogre. That's how tanky he is right now. Okay, so yeah, he went for the Shadow Blade after the Dragon after the Dragon Lance. Kind of a standard build that we saw, uh, especially um, yeah, EP were the ones who were doing it a lot. Every single game, he was rushing the Shadow Blade on Shadow Fiend. Down bottom, Ace does manage to pick off this tier 2. Again, so much control now. You look at ways that Escape can actually get to the Roche Pit. It is not looking easy for them. They've got very few TP targets. Mid lane, Hesta Joe. He'd love to hookshot right in onto this. They land the stun onto the Miranda. They don't even need the hookshot here. Yapsor just going to get dusted up. That Moonlight Shadow cannot save you now. Bristleback hits the goo. That's going to allow the slow for Alchemist just to go and start clubbing him down. Ace. So Alk is now feeling on top of the world right now. Ace has an Abyssal Blade. Yes, sir, he does. That is a farmed Bristleback. Yeah, that's just like, that's the really cool thing about playing oh, Bristleback. Oh, dust this. coming in. Noya, he knows what's going down. Cinder, though, looking to turn this in their favor. There's going to be a Fiend's Grip here. Alchemist goes for the self -stop. Oh. But it's close enough that it actually hurts the pain as well. Oh no. Yeah, I, I, I think he just gave his life for his <laughs> for his buddy. He was like, Koifa, I got you. That's like the definition of sitting on a bomb to try to protect your allies. Yeah. All right, Roche still not going to be up. You've got Bristleback. No more ages for him. But that, his inventory looks so funny. <laughs> Echo Saber, Abyssal, bots. Just like, what? <laughs> no, don't forget the wand, dude. Wands yeah, I mean, win games. The wand's doing, wand is like my, uh, I'm a big advocate of the wand. Ah, I, too, I like man. wand. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so we're getting pretty close to the Agnum Scepter. Needs about 900 more gold to get that online. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be a lot of magical burst coming out, but again, Imperial do not seem to care. I mean, their only squishy heroes are really the Clockwork and the Coddle, and those aren't super key to keep alive. Yeah, they're feeling... They're feeling good. They're going to go They're for an aggressive good. smoke now. A nice hook here could be great. They're going to be calling in the rest of their buddies as well. Trixie going to go in for the burrow strike, trying to blink away. The arrow does connect onto the clockwork, but he's just fine. He'll sit off that arrow duration, and they're looking for more here. Marana caught out all on her own. Yeah, sorry, going to be leaping to freedom, but seems like Baby Knight might be able to catch him. They've got the speed, man. This guy is just flying with that bloodlust. Yeah, sorry, is just going to drop the Star Storm, but that's going to be pretty much the last thing he does. Value. Arrows, the mud golem. Got to get that. Got to get that gold. And yeah, Yapstar starts pinging out. He's like, they have vision here. They have to have some type of ward. And they do. They have a ward on the high ground. Yeah, and a sentry as well to make sure it's not dewarded. And just going to be a TP out from our Shadow Fiend. He really hasn't felt that impactful here. Uh, I know the panel was really hyped to see the Shadow Fiend, but I mean, he is... Uh... Probably I was hyped too. Zero, zero, 003 He's got himself a Dragonland Shadow Blade. I mean, what does he need to really start participating in these fights and getting kills and doing damage? Uh, I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't really even know. Like, it's like he almost needs a BKB, but oh, there's like a crazy amount of physical damage. Oh, Sin. He's, he's just so far out here. He goes in, he gets the Nightmare off, but... Oh, no, your existence is now a nightmare. You've just been chain-killed now. 0-6 oh, on the Bane. They can't really even, like, team fight now, actually, with uh, Escape's lineup. Like, 
He's so far behind, he can't even really go for that BKB. He wants to, he went Silver Edge to break the Bristle back, so that, that makes sense for sure. He, and then he like he wants some other farming items because he doesn't want to have to commit. To Bristle back, he's moving but... forward here. Imperial, they're ready to get cocky. They're ready to go. There is going to be that Burrow Strike coming in. Oh, the Requiem comes out. Bristle back though, he there will get go. killed. It costs a whole hell of a lot of ults, but it looks like they're doing it. Escape mounting their first real successful fight of the game, getting two of the highest value targets they can possibly find. Value is right. He picks up the Silver Edge and they get a kill on the Bristle back. Oh, right Clockwork, he's going to be going down as well. Has to choke pop the Blade Mail, but suddenly 0 and 3 escape. They're punished that cockiness from Imperial, and those are just phenomenal kills to get. The three highest net worth heroes on the board for Imperial. Super value. Silver Edge into instant kills. Like, look at that gold change, you man. For? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I think it was, like you said, it was a little bit cocky. Ace just felt really comfortable to be able to like, dive there. He even went Blink Dagger now, too, so he's got Blink Abyssal on a Bristleback. Don't think we really want... Uh, we don't think we really see that very often. But yeah, definitely excellent pickup by Quake. We're going to be going for that Silver Edge, and now he's picking up another Ogre Club, which will probably be oh, mid lane, like I mentioned. Era, he really wants this tower, and oh, he's going to get denied. Very nice play by Noya there. Juggernaut just slinking away now, not wanting to tangle with Imperial. They're now angry. The Bristleback has respawned, so just going to go back reset looking at the overall net worth chart though look how much those three kills really swung things around this is now definitely within escapes grasp yeah oh my god what is that like a math is really hard right now six thousand gold <laughs> swing yeah maybe a little bit more than a six thousand gold swing total on that yeah they definitely need to watch out and it looks like um baby knight is going to be going for that ac now next so he's going to be that full aura guy that we kind of expected oh ace he's got the chakra he wants to go in and find some kills here he sure would love to get on top of trixie they've got to have some vision here and coddle does not have any dust yeah right he's just, just sitting oh there we go running. oh he tries but trixie with quick reaction gets the sandstorm off doesn't get abyssaled and now he is Hiding. Blink on cooldown though for one more second. He's gonna get a pistol. He does oh, get a pistol. There we go. He drops the hammer. And uh, well, Burrow Strike to freedom. Just gonna try to force staff himself away. Can they break this in time? Uh, is that Sand King just walking out of it? Yeah, he yep. he realized he was in a. <laughs> he committed to his face. Up top, you got Hesta Joe looking into uh, the top lane. Maybe trying to get some kills here. Again, there is going to be an invis quake bus. So Cinderin is not going to be solo. Clockwork is going to eat all the damage, but allows for Imperial to make smarter decisions about where they put their ogre. At least they're not going to lose any more heroes there. Yeah, Hesta Joe, that was actually a really good heads up play for him to go up there and try to go for that kill. But yeah, having the vision from escape, they see him making the rotation and just a nice, nice play, nice fiend grip and uh, movement by Quake Vincent. And Ace is still having a nice easy time, still on the top of the net worth chart. As Alchemist now has four points in Grievel's Greed. They're going for another play. They've got the Silver Edge. We see the ping coming out, though. It's all good. They're fine. <laughs> it's a it's sneaky time. Escape, no. They really got to keep this momentum up. They got a really good fight. It started to make their heroes look good. They got big items that they needed. Now Imperial, they're just crawling around this rune spot. Escape, no, what's going on, but... Yeah, sort of just dewarded two wards uh, from the side of Imperial, so it's, it's definitely nice to always be taking out the enemy vision, especially in this type of scenario of a game when you're you're kind of on your way to be coming back into it into the game. Yeah, you're actually, you're actually pretty close to, be, to being back, just because of how well-farmed your uh, Marana and your Sanking are in comparison to the right. Clockwork and Ogre, or Clockwork and Coddle. Looks like we're going to have a Roche Pit scuffle. Escape are very aware that this is going on. They're going to throw it an arrow. It actually stuns the Roche, so helping out Imperial a fair amount. Hester Joe is going to be there playing the bodyguard. Noya as well, ready to initiate on anyone trying to get into the pit. They are able to successfully grab the Roshan. Aegis on Baby Knight, and the hook shot in. Oh, they find the Marana here. It's not looking great for Escape. Very well played from Imperial. They just, a combination of luck and just really, really well-timed plays. Yeah, it just dies so fast with the acid spray and the uh, goo and... And Solar Crest, it's just too much minus armor, it gets burned on so quickly. When Bristleback has hive stacks of Warpath with Bloodlust as well. It's a very quick Roshan kill and escape where they were like, okay, we might actually be able to make it there in time. But, oh my god, it's already dead. So <laughs> they end up losing the Murana, like you mentioned. And uh, yeah, now we have a cool pickup. Noya picks up a gem and Ace is going to be holding, hanging on to it. So no more no more surprises from a Silver Edge Silver Edge coming out onto Ace. He's even building a plate mail now, which will, uh, I think... I think that he's gonna go for what? I think he's gonna go for like the Shivas since I believe that the Alchemist already has AC finished up, so yeah. Yeah, Bristleback picks up the, the Shivas recipe. That's just gonna be a lot of survivability. I mean, at this point, Imperial are focusing less on their own personal damage output, less on their own, you know, 
personal growth. It's just, it's all survivability. They know that Escape does not have the damage right now to cut through them. Shadow Fiend, he's still struggling. In terms of net worth, he's going to be fourth on the charts. He's found himself, well, almost the makings of BKB. He's got himself a Dragon Lance and a Silver Edge, but it's just not enough right now. Up top. You've got Era just burning down slowly, looking to push in. In fact, this might warrant some more rotations from Imperial to try to drive this push back. Looks like they are going to be moving everyone in. Sin just crawling into the bushes. He's got himself a TP if he wants to bail, but looks like they're waiting around to see if this is going to be a good gank to go on Imperial. Everyone's in the area. Cinder is, is set up, though. He gets a ward down, too, so he's able to see a little bit of what's going on in the area. Imperial now puts down their own ward, catching the movements into their own jungle, and this top lane, which has been heavily uh, occupied by escape. I actually could not think of the word. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brains are starting to slow down. We're at that moment. point in the day, but one more game, man. This is the last one. It is all on the line here. I mean, I'm just glad to see some three-game series. It's, it's always good to see teams actually just duke it out no matter what. I mean, it's the elimination, especially for this one, so it's, it's good to see just feeling... Them feeling good about the game. Aces. He looks like he knew something was up, but I don't think he does. He I mean, just... he he smells something. His spidey senses are tingling, but I mean, he doesn't even need to initiate now. Just galloping around, securing farm, securing all that XP. With the travels coming in, he's gonna rotate bottom. It looks like that's where Imperial want to jump. Everyone who can get there is getting there. They're trying to get on top of the Sand King, but he's able to blink and burrow strike his way out to freedom. There's gonna be a TP out from the Juggernaut. They're not able to catch him, so Imperial just kind of wasting a little bit of time. Escape, keeping them on them toes, and we'll see if Imperial is able to find any objectives off the back of this. There's no tier two to go for, so I think they're just gonna clear out the neutrals, maybe try to smoke up and look for a sneaky play mid. Yeah, they're, uh, they, they want to defend their tier 1s as much as possible, even though they lost two of them already. It's, it's still, uh, they definitely, that's what they want to be doing. Recalling now, Ace. They look like they know that people are on the high ground there. Obviously, they just saw the Sandstorm. As to Joe, does he get the hook? Oh, oh. nice blink by Trixie. Just barely going to scrape past him. These Ancients are going to get cleaned up by Imperial eventually, though. And while up top, you've got Cinder and waiting in the wings. He'd really love to use that level 1 Fiend's Grip. His levels are slowing down, but he can definitely do a lot with them. Alchemist, he's walking around. He'd be a very high-value target to go for now. There's going to be... He's coming in with the boots to travel. They're looking for the stun onto Koikva, but going to go blink into the trees for the self-stun, not wanting to put himself at risk. Cinderin, he knows he's got to move at some point. Moonlight Shadow cannot last forever. And he's just going to go into another juke spot and TP out. So no blood spilled in the last couple of minutes, just a lot of, uh, of motion around the map. The swing is starting to go back in Imperial's way, though. You know, this Bristleback's able to just push, split push so hard since he has his boots to travel. He's able to get recalled all over the map. So he's putting a lot of pressure onto the side of Escape while Alchemist, you know, he's an Alchemist. He's obviously going to just farm a little bit faster with the Greebles Greed versus the other teams. And and Escape just feels a bit pressured, you know. They they can't really push so confidently out, uh, push these lanes out so confidently just because of the way the Imperial's moving on the map. Yeah, I love the way Imperial have been playing this Coddle. Just going in, uh, allowing Ace to farm wherever he pleases, then using that Coddle recall to get him back into the fight when it counts. Uh, it's just been working out so well for them. And now tier three is starting to get siege. Look how fast Baby Knight's hitting. He is not messing around here. Yep, so he moves in, just going to immediately leave himself back to safety and uh, waiting for the next wave to come in before Imperial get too cocky. They learned their lesson the last time. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're feeling good. They're not really worrying too much about, like, the pace of the game at all. They know that they're in a quite quite an advantageous position and I mean they have ages for not much longer anyway it's going down in what like another 10 seconds or so so they're just probably gonna keep doing the same thing they've got all the outer towers now out so maybe they're gonna put some very deep wards just to catch the movement from era uh, from escape and they actually see era now too so he gets struck at the blink oh he doesn't get the stun on him uh, Alka's just gonna be going in and that's gonna be another spin TP you see era playing so safe here that's not really how he loves to play as juggernaut he likes to be the aggressor he likes to be the one going in jumping on you but you see who is forced into this you know clearing build he needs to be able to clear the push coming in from Imperial as fast as possible yeah, try to accelerate his farm as well. It's just, it is very difficult with the way that Imperial is playing. They're very keen on just moving between the lanes super quickly. Like, uh, Boots of Travel is always a useful item when you get it so early. Yeah, the early objective focus really helping out Imperial. The fact that all those tier 1s were down like pre-20 minutes has just been phenomenal. Escape have less ways to TP into these fights, less ways to move in aggressively. The lanes are usually pushed out in Imperial's favor. This ward by Imperial scouting all of Escape's movement right now. They saw, I think, all three oh, heroes. Has the Joe. He's going in. He pops the blade mail and the glimmer cape, just bailing out as soon as, as soon as he sees the Marana. Imperial, though, maybe they're looking to take this fight. It could be a real nice place to engage. There hasn't been a whole lot of bloodshed. 
for the last couple of minutes, and I think Imperial are starting to get antsy. They got their next round of items. They want to go in. They want to blast this game wide open Ooh. and take their well-deserved victory. Okay. Where's was, the synth going at? It went to the Keeper of the Light. I was like, oh, Rise, Rise saved 2,000 gold, and then he bought a four-step. So it must have been like communication between them. Like, dude, don't worry. I got your four-step. Mm -hmm. This is their way to siege the base. Daytime push with the bristle back, with the AC finished up. They've got their frontliners. They've got the heal sustain. I mean, they can just now recall Bristleback whenever and wherever they want. Baby Knight going to go ahead, channel up that stun. They've got the dust. This time, Koikva always oh, able to get off his BKB. So Alec goes in for the stun once again. But it's still looking like a fight that's splitting up escape. They've got the sentry down, but Yapsor is able to blink himself back up to the high ground. He brings a whole troop of Imperial heroes after him. Big old parade of dire heroes on the Radiant Turf. And looks like Yapsor might worm himself out of this one. He picks up a regen rune. Oh, that's going to feel real nice on his mana. And, uh, well, he's going to go mana ahead and get mana stuff. leaked. He's on the high ground, though. Can Ace keep up with him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Blat. <laughs> they just, I mean, they're thirsty for blood. For sure. No, yeah, he's going to find Cinderin as well. Goes in for the stun, and they've got the follow-up there. As Alchemist is moving in slowly, but surely chugging along. Sleep will end on the ogre, and now escape. They've just got to retreat. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Ace going for a chase of his own. Blinks forward, but Era, he's going to find himself a little bit of safety between these trees. Yeah, very aggressive warding coming out from Imperial. Just trying to keep escape uh, in their side of the map. And the, I mean, they're, they're, like we said, we said this multiple times. They're doing a great job of keeping the pressure on. All right. So looking at the overall net worth chart, it is going to be just kind of bouncing around here. It's still planning out in Imperial's favor, but when I mean, you've got that like EKG spike coming in, making sure that uh, you know escape are showing some signs of life. They're definitely not just rolling over and taking this. Yeah, the the spike was definitely like that was right when the silver edge was picked up. It yeah, caught, that it caught them kill. up guard. Yeah, <laughs> but now you know the gem on the gem on Ace and them just playing a bit more. I guess a bit more conservative. Just cool. you know, this is elimination. They they really want to win this game, obviously, to continue. With <laughs> Bane goes for a gem of his own, leaving his net worth at a whopping 500. Now they're going in. Okay, there's gonna be a hook shot in. Sand King's up in the air. The cogs trying to burn up some mana. There will be a stun onto Trixie, unfortunately biting it, but that's just going to be a Sand King. It's not a Juggernaut, it's not the Shadow Fiend. They're saving their high value heroes. They're still uh, crawling around in their base. Does he have buyback? Look how fast Baby Knight's just destroying this tower. He doesn't tower. have buyback on the Sand King. No, he does not. This could actually be a tower. Maybe they I mean, they don't know that he doesn't have buyback, but Ace should be able to frontline pretty well. But now the lanes are... I mean, okay, yeah, oh, okay. they yeah. have 5,500 gold on that Bristleback, so yeah, they don't want to rush it, they want to wait for that. He has a heart, he has an Abyssal, he has a Shiva's, this guy is unkillable, he's so gosh darn tanky. And this is the beauty about having the Ags Coddle now, is they are always going to be able to push the lanes out whenever it gets pushed into their into their side of the map, and then just recall him back and start push. But now it is it is nighttime, there is no Coddle heal, but he does keep the Ag items. All right, Imperial slowly but surely working on this slow siege. You see Ace just eating tower shots like it's absolutely nothing. He's trying to turn around as much as possible, making sure Koikva procs those passive uh, bristles. As to Joe, looking for a nice lineup onto that hook shot. Doesn't want to dive too deeply here. Yeah, I mean, they don't have to, right? They can just beat on the towers constantly. <laughs> Ara, though, doing this is a great job by Ara, keeping the lanes pushed in, forcing reactions. And yes. Joe, is he gonna spot? Oh, he gets spot him! Oh my god, he actually gets oh, to the Abyssal. This is not great here. If Juggernaut were able to get out there, it was a phenomenal play, but hindsight's 2020, he just couldn't afford to go down there. He doesn't have buyback for over a minute. Did he have the blink into the tree? I think he could have blinked in the trees and TP'd, because he did have blink up, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, he, I guess he, he just thought that he would be able to get away from the clockwork in time, but yeah, definitely a nice. Did he blink backwards, just not into the trees? Yeah, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm drunk. I don't know. It must have might have happened. He maybe just didn't expect the clockwork to be so quick on his toes to be able to get that opportunity. But yeah, definitely, it was a good. It's definitely the right move for what Arrow was doing to be able to, to pushing the lanes out when it's all this like downtime. But yeah, definitely not wanting to die, obviously. Hey, you gotta keep yourself safe above all else, and the the no buyback is big. If Imperial were somehow able to turn that immediately into structures, that could have just been game. For now, just playing passively. Bottom lane, we've got Koikva just doing what he can to clear lanes to keep himself up in terms of net worth. He's having a struggle. Mid lane, we've got an initiation in onto Yapsor here. He's stuck in the cogs. He's going to be mana drained down. He is going to be low health, low mana, and he is just dead. He almost solo killed Noya there. He got the arrow into the double star fall on him, but with the glimmer cape, with the spell resistance, he was able to live, and then, yeah, the backup arrives. Yeah, he's got a, a lot of heals going his way as well. He's got uh, Coddle, just doing Coddle things. He's also got himself uh, some urns and some sticks. So, it's just going to be Imperial. Slow Siege may win the game for them. And again, Elimination Series. If Imperial win this, Escape are out. Yeah.
Yep, yep, yep. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Ace, eating tower shots here. Yeah, there's Epicenter going off right now. Oh, they, they are able to get a throw strike off, but again, it's a bristle with a heart. He's going to get Fiend's Grip up as well, four step down to the low ground, Glimmer Cape as well. They're doing everything they can to preserve Ace, and they only get him down to half health. That is a lot of ults committed. They really only have the Requiem left in the arsenal of escape right now. Yeah, they, they even Silver Edge hit him, so it broke his... Uh... Broke the bristle back, obviously, and he's able to take a bit more damage from it, but still not enough to not enough to break through 3,500 HP. And now he's completely full that. health. Yeah, heart, heart regen. Out of combat. There's a double damage, and the Roshan is now up. This is going to be Rosh and Cheese, and this might just be what Imperial need to seal the deal. Yeah, this will be a very good timing, too, because they're going to get it. They're going to Aegis and Cheese. And do we even have room for it? I guess Baby Nate will drop his... Yeah, he's dropping his tracks. He's got boots in trouble now. So they get the Aegis, they get the Cheese. It's going to be daytime in about 30 seconds or so. And Coddle's now level 13, so at least he has level 3 Blast. So he's got like that 400 healing burst once that comes around. Plus the daytime vision. But same thing, you know, they want to make sure that their lanes are pushed out nicely before they try to go for that. And they have they have the potential with all the boots to travel, so why not? Yap for the... Away from Yap, sir. Oh, they are out. able to go ahead. They catch up. They get the stun onto the Mirana. Mirana's just going to do whatever he can. Hops into that ghost form to try to just run as fast as possible. But I don't think you can outrun the pain that's about to come on. Oh, the Yule's up from Trixie, though, buying some time. I don't know if that's going to be enough. He is able to TP out. There's no stuns. Baby Knight not able to get the vision in time to uh, toss out that concoction. So he's going to go for the self-stun. Aside from the Bane, no more escape blood is shed. But Imperial, now they have a window to move in, clear out this lane, and perhaps get some damage onto the Tier 3s as well. Yep, they're bringing... They just like they keep doing the same kind of thing, you know. They just don't want these lanes to be pressuring in on them, and then they want to go. But they do have a couple minutes still to wait before the Aegis starts to tick down. But yeah, they they definitely. I mean, more than ideally, they want to push with this Aegis in the daytime. So we we'll we should be seeing that coming out from them soon. This Coddle's got hella money here. Well, baby Knight. Oh. Okay, boom! He botched into a very uh. Very far forward position, and he's gonna get completely nuked down by all those things. But oh, they actually mistimed it. Ah, he slows down. It's all right. Oh god, that's the job. That's the job. That's save your buddy syndrome at its finest. He leaps in. He's like, oh, don't worry, I got you. And this might be Imperial with a lot of bleeding. Trixie moving forward gets the Yules back off, and the arrow does connect. That's a gem. That's gonna be a gem going the way of escape. Not like they didn't have one of their own already, but. I that was unnecessary, I feel. I feel like Imperial just got a little bit overzealous. They wanted to defend their alchemist so bad that they bleed away both their supports. Yeah, a bit of a misplay there by Baby Knight just TPing in the front. I mean, he TPed super far aggressive in there. He kind of has to expect that they may want to make a move on him there, but yeah, he has to be careful. Like, uh, this game is not over. Escape's definitely able to bring it back. They have 20,000 net worth now on the Shadow Fiend, 18,000 on Jug. Even Marana and Sanking are doing quite well, so. Yeah, they definitely need to make sure not to be making those mistakes. Ace gets arrowed. It's in the back. It's gonna be really hard to bring him down. They've got a lot of lockdown though. They've got the silver edge hit and now. They're trying but... everything they've got, but they can barely make a dent in him. Yep. They're gonna lose their tier two tower though. Fortify comes in. Are Imperial actually gonna try to go and mount the defense without their alchemist? That's risky. They're moving their bristle back forward. Tier two falls and escape. Oh, they know they've got limited time to get in, get out without any loss. Ooh. Take a look at the overall net worth graph. I mean, it's it's pretty up and down. It's slowly but surely sloping in Imperial's favor. But again, Escape showing some signs of life. They've got little footholds back oh, into this game. The hook, hook shot, though. All right. As to Joe, just looking for more. There's going to be that blade mail coming forward. And do they have the vision? Looks like Yap's sort of going to be walking away. Ace, looking to go in for some jungle creeps instead. Yeah, Coddle's got the vision. And he's like, oh, yo, there's a bounty rune here. Baby Knight. Get your bounty rune. <laughs> Plus 810. Oh, there's going to be another Ags pickup for our Alchemist. Who's this one going to? Ogre? Noya looks like he wants it. He's like, dude, I'm come I'm here, man. You know you want to give it to me, but I think they're going to give it to Hester Joe. Even though he's... No, he almost has it. They, have they might as well give it to the Ogre. Yeah, he should give it to the Ogre. You better give it to the Ogre. Yeah, Noya knows. Oh, Noia's yeah, like, it's time. It's time. The little courier's coming in. This courier's been getting a workout, just following around Baby Knight. And now they're actually looking for more gear. They might find a kill. Era, he's going to try to spin his way to freedom. But look at that. You've got the Bristleback that just doesn't care. The arrow slightly off the mark, taking oh, nice out the Alpha Wolf. Yeah, I mean, that Yule Scepter on the Sand King has been getting so much value. Ace, though, he's still hot in his heels. <laughs> oh, the block in. They get Hester Joe a little bit further into the fight, but they aren't actually able to find the kill onto that Jug. That would have been huge. He's gonna, okay, he's just going to give it to the Bristle for the stats, and then, you know, obviously the AoE goo that he gets from that. Oh, yeah, now he's just snotting goo in all directions. 
Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I actually thought he was going to give it to the Ogre this time, but sure, why not? He gives uh, more tankiness to the Bristleback and just... He's just like, alright, Ace. You're the one who seems the most concentrated in this game. All eyes on you. Yeah, I mean, at this point, there's enough magic immunity on the hardcore targets of escape. You've got the spin from the Juggernaut, you've got the BKB up uh, from the Shadow Fiend, that giving Ogre another stun that doesn't penetrate magic immunity is... It's not the best. Just getting that all out slow from the Bristleback, though, he's... He's just going to be... Snotting up a storm now. We're gonna see it in action here. There's gonna be that Yule's up once again. Has to Joe. He's getting low. He's gonna get broken up by that Silver Edge now. Everyone's gonna be burning mana. There's a dust out. They see what's going down here. Where's the actual damage coming from? Noya gets the stun here. They've gotta find this kill. They just drop the hammer. Look at that goo flying out. And that's gonna be a lot coming out. The Requiem from Quake Vice. BKB's wearing thin. They are able to get the channel up of that Fiend's Grip. And they do lose the Bristleback here. He does have buyback. Baby Knight eats up a cheese. He's running for his life here. He does not have that Chemical Rage. Needs to be very, very careful with his life. But looks like he's just gonna get completely surrounded and killed off. There's a TP out from the Ogre. Clockwork and Ogre, the lone survivors of that fight. What the hell just happened, Fogged? Uh, Yapsor got a five second arrow on Bristleback and he just gets completely kaboomed by everything on top of it with the Silver Edge on top. So so maybe putting all your eggs in the Bristleback uh, basket might not be the most ideal thing because now Alchemist is actually looking fairly weak. 18,000 net worth, giving away two Aghanims already. He's not the commanding force that he was for quite a bit. Yeah, Escape, they're kicking and screaming. They definitely want to take this series. You can see how much they want to stay in this tournament. They're fighting Imperial for all they're worth now. Their tournament life is on the line. Escape. What else they got up their sleeves here? We've got Shadow Fiend. Gonna be picking up a Daedalus pretty soon, so dishing out a ton of damage. Uh, Juggernaut, you know, he's building up here. He's already got his Mjolnir. 5,000 gold in the bank. What do you pick up on Jug here? Um, he can still, uh, he can probably save. I mean, I Scotty, so he has some more tanks, more tank ability. He doesn't really have a lot of stats uh, with his builder now. He just has the Manta style, but it looks like he's just gonna go for the Butterfly instead. They don't really have a MKB, anyone who's gonna be picking up an MKB anytime soon. Alright, Shadowfiend actually goes into the MKB rather than the Daedalus, who had both the, the shiny swords. And meanwhile, Sand King, he might get obliterated here. There's gonna be a TP in as a, yeah, there, there's no escape for the Sand King. You can Yule's all you want, but you're still dead for 70 seconds. Yeah, so, what, Ace used the buyback earlier, so he's, yeah, he's definitely looking a little bit, he's not looking as happy as he was. Even though he's still looking, uh, he's still at super top net worth, especially with this Aghanim being pulled to him, but... I mean, Ace is, he's still way at the top of the net worth chart. He's really hard to kill, uh, but I mean, like you mentioned, that is kind of crippling the Alchemist. Usually the Alk is going to be way at the top, and he has his own team fight sustain. He brings a ton of damage, a ton of attack speed uh, into the mix, but Imperial are really relying on that Bristleback to do the lion's share of the work. I mean, you're, if, you're, if you're playing a single core Bristleback now at this point, it's, it's not it's not what you want. You're playing versus Shadow Fiend Jug, a Murano who's scaling, a Sand King who's scaling even more. I definitely need uh, Baby Knight to get an, get some get some items for himself. I think at this point because he's not really he's not strong like I was mentioning. He's not he's not in that position that he was earlier. Yeah, escape. They're they're doing their best here. Shadow Fiend is going to be. I mean, he he's definitely worked his way up. He had such a tough lane early on. We're talking like 10 minutes in. He was barely getting any CS. And now look at him, second on the net worth chart. He's doing his best. His BKB is starting to wear thin. He's only got seven seconds left on that charge. Yep. Four thousand gold though. So oh. that's going to be. Oh wow. Yeah. As well. I didn't even actually notice it at first, but um, they picked up the gem right away on the coddle again, and they lost it right away during that engagement. So they don't have any reveal actually. On, I don't think on any of their heroes. Does anyone even have a dust? Okay. Clockwork has one. One dust and one sentry on Coddle. You got one shot, oh, one they opportunity. Actually... Did they, they see? It? <laughs> they... Radiant scan? Did they? They didn't break the smoke. <laughs> sneaky. They're getting uh, Escape's getting being spooked. sneaky right now. They saw the clockwork rocket. They saw it. Oh, arrow, arrow shoots out. Ground. Baby Knight. Oh, is he gonna get locked down here? He's gonna take an Omni Slash. He's turning around. He will be able to get off that unstable concoction, but he's getting low. Has to Joe pops the blade on the back lines. It's gonna be a requiem, but no one's hurting that bad. Moonlight Shadow trying to bail out everyone as there is very limited vision. The one dust comes out. Now Baby Knight's going back in, trying to reinitiate, but Trixie just goes in with the Burrow Strike. This is gonna be the first casualty. Clockwork does end up falling. The Healing Ward helping out. Escape so much. They're gonna go be able to D Ward most of this. All right, one more hit in the sentry. Keep trying. There we go. Um, but yeah, that looked good. Escape. Just go in. They get what they want, and they back out scratch-free. 
looking a bit grim for Imperial now. They're lacking damage in these fights, and they keep getting... I think Yapsor just keeps landing arrows on this Bristol back. He gets arrowed, he gets Requiemed. Uh, he wasn't even able to really get into the fight to do any damage there. Clockwork gets Omni Slashed, gets... Oh, no, oh, no, sorry. Clockwork got arrowed, and then they got the Omni Slash follow-up afterwards. But yeah, it, it, I just like... They're not really able to do any damage with this uh, this Moonlight Shadow that keeps coming out. They all just keep going invis during the engagements, and then they just get like kind of kited around. And now it's at this point where escapes the ones for the damage dealers with Shadow Fiend. Having that MKB, like you said, he's going to be toward his, on his way toward his uh, Daedalus or, I mean, Bloodthorn, maybe, if we... I mean, that's a cool kind of build that we don't see people do, but... Yeah, we'll see what he wants to go for. Escape for just reading this game really, really well. They realize that, you know, Bristleback is the issue. Bristleback is frontlining. Bristleback is holding on to such a huge portion of Imperial's net worth that initiating always in the Bristleback and always locking down the Bristleback means that Imperial are left scrambling when he goes down. So we'll see how they're going to respond to that. I mean, the Alchemist, he's... He, he's catching up. He's now going for some more self-centered items, saving up a good amount of gold, but I just don't know if he can scale fast enough to really keep up with Escape, who are just starting to ball out of control. Yeah, I mean, he's just, he's like... Oh, Hookshot comes in. They get the Juggernaut. They're burning up some of his mana. Oh, he's fresh out of mana here. He's going to get stunned up. Ace, he's just sleeping. He's waiting. No he's... reveal, and they kill Rise in the back now, too. Mm-hmm. So this Moonlight Shadow putting in work. Back line, we still got a, a chase going down, dust popped up, but that's going to be it. That's going to be the end of the engage. And in, it seems like Escape, they're going in, they're slowly whittling down Imperial. Looking at the overall net worth chart, we are touching zero at 50 minutes in the game. Wow, that's actually pretty insane. I would not have really expected that in, in I mean, the earlier stages of this game. but Against I, a team with an Alchemist, that's huge, because you think about yeah. how much net worth is focused on that Grievous Greed. Yeah. Uh... I don't know, losing those losing those two gems is really detrimental to Imperial, but they, they should definitely be carrying like dust and sentries on the other supports. Like the Ogre at least has one now, and now the Coddle picked up a couple more sentries and Clockwork has dust again, but yeah, they're not able to take these fights in the same manner that they were earlier when they were so far ahead. Escape's lineup is now starting to look it's hitting its time of fruition and it's just becoming stronger and stronger in the in this in this game. And now the courier is bringing out a yeah, Daedalus and I believe it's a they got a couple of more items on the carrier, actually. This Roche going down fast. Imperial not looking to let it go down without a fight, though. Can they actually get in the pit fast enough? Look at this unstable concoction. Just flapping in the breeze there. Eventually connects onto Marana, and now Imperial looking to make a stand for themselves. Blinking forward. Baby Knight goes forward, takes out the courier, but now he himself is going to get stuck. Ogre eats the arrow, and the break comes in onto the Alk. He falls as well. There's no buyback for either of these heroes. It could be all over. Yapsor chasing down the clockwork. They might be able to get him. Has to Joe gets dropped with that Eth Blade now. They're looking for more on the back, lads. Ace, he's scrambling. His team is dying. There's going to be that mana leak coming out. Era trying to spin himself to move forward. The epicenter charged up. They get the kill onto the Coddle. Oh, he's so low, and he finally ends up falling. Jesus is going to be on the floor. They got to get up as much region as possible. Ace, he's just zigzagging back to the base. There's no buybacks on Imperial right now. It's down to the Bristleback to defend for the next minute. And that was the next, the next item showing by Baby Knight there. He got a BKB right before that engagement, but he's... I mean, he's like a support hero at this point. He's he not just able to did do not anything. live at all. <laughs> he, he got broken by the Silver Edge, so he just didn't have really anything to do. Yeah, I mean, it, this is like a complete 180. This is Escape's game now, completely. They Look at the net worth chart, man. It's yeah. back in the green for the first time in ever. Uh, yeah, I think like Imperial just kind of put too many eggs in one basket onto the Briscoe back and... It, Missing their timing opportunity, like Baby Nuts, Baby Nuts boots of travel in that top lane is actually like him dying there. Is like I don't know, they had ages, they had cheese, and they had like their timing. Everything was looking great for them, and then now it's just like a complete switch around. Like that's two lanes of racks off the back of an ultra successful team fight where there was huge amounts of net worth sprayed at escape. This is a, now Escape's game. They they have got this secured Imperial. Uh, they're still going to put up a fight. They're not going to roll over and tap out just yet. But it is looking so much more difficult for them than it was 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I mean, like Baby Knight's go there was he went in and he killed the courier. He had like I don't know, like 4,000 plus net worth on it. But that ain't worth losing four heroes for a courier. And this is crazy. Escape somehow found a way back into this slowly but surely with the pickoffs, with the discipline to focus down the bristleback to pick smart engages. And they've yeah. done it. You can tell how much they want to stay in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, I think that they had a very hard game to be coming into them, but I do think that Imperial made some drastic, drastic mistakes in this game. Like, just focusing so much 
Yeah, so with like, on the bristle back? Focusing so much on that with the bristle back and then using their Aegis. Baby Knight literally ports top and th that that double death there completely screwed their whole timing there, honestly. Like, I don't want to be like harping on it so much, but that's actually, it's such a big deal right now. Like, leading into this last, what, late last like 20 minutes? After that moment, it's been pretty much oh. escapes game entirely now. The net worth chart looks like it hurts. That is a complete 180. It is just spiked up in escapes favor. They're getting really big items on their heroes that have been pretty much poverty stricken all game the juggernaut he's feeling impactful quakefa finally able to get online and demonstrate uh, some real dominance here the mkb and the daedalus are really going to work i like the choice to go uh for the bkb early early on it's at five seconds now but he's still going to get a ton of use out of it yeah escapes i mean they're the ones now to group up they've got uh they've got the network advantage by a lot and you look at the chart, Bristleback, he's still number one, uh, but he's really not contributing anything to these fights. He's focused down too easily. He's split off from his team. He knows it's up to him to live, but he needs to front line, and he just can't do everything at once. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, he's got this cool goo thing that's going on, but, you know, it's it's not really doing anything. And these, there's not really any way for them to fight, and the like, escape's just... escape's feeling good. I mean, they definitely can't get cocky here again. They got to keep their heads straight. They can't throw this away because one full wipe and Imperial are right back in this. They can push incredibly quickly. Lincoln's onto Quakeva. He's looking to start this siege off and, and just slowly but surely chopping away at this tier three. Hookshot comes in, but they're not going to initiate here. Cog's just to push him back. The goop not going to connect onto Quakeva. Stun being channeled up by the Alchemist, but now he's just going to sit there and take a little snooze. Healing Ward. Full heal up, they stay off Aegis. They have the momentum pushing in the two side lanes. Top lane, uh, top lane's kind of, yeah, now it's starting to go, but yeah, two side lanes being pushed in, obviously, with those Raxes down, and yeah, they still got Aegis. They've got, you know, they're still able to at least beat on this tower a little bit, but still a bit hard to walk up there. Baby Knight going in, just breaking the Lincolns, not anything too drastic, and again, Escape have the freedom to move. They've now cornered Imperial in their base. Everyone's rich now. Everyone's rich on the side of escape. Except for... Eh, Cinder's actually... Cinder's on his way. He's got 4,300 net worth. Yeah, it's, that's a far cry from the 500 <laughs> he was like 30 minutes ago. I mean, the next person on his team only has 20... Like, 16,000 more gold than him, but, you know, come on. Sin's doing his job. He's buying a crap ton of sentries and obs. Definitely. He he has a difficult start. At one point, a couple moments ago, he was 0-6 and, and just couldn't seem to stop dying. Just kept being the victim of those Imperial ganks. But he's uh he's stopped dying for the last 15 or so minutes, and he's he's it's, feeling good. It's pretty much that whole momentum switch that changed the last like the last 20 minutes. Pretty much after that after that age just got misused, and now Ace. Does go back, he picks up an MKB now, so he's got something to deal with that butterfly. Yeah, he's had that for a little bit. Yeah, I just, yeah. <laughs> it's very late here. Yeah, yeah for a bit. Sorry. Alchemist, I mean, he's continuing to pick up more self-centered items now. Maelstrom just to keep these waves of creeps back, because Imperial are having a tough time dealing with the push coming at them from all sides. They're going to have to go deal with this top lane now pushing in. That's going to occupy Baby Knight completely, and now Escape have that window to go into the bottom lane. Throwing some illusions on the tower. Oh, look at that atomic sneeze coming out, man. It looks cool. I'll give him that. It's working. It's keeping the creeps under control. Yeah, they're just keeping them stranded in their base. Slowly but surely taking, doing some damage on the tower, but this is a, uh... This is a slow siege, to say the least. <laughs> Definitely a slow siege. Again, uh, Imperial. After a crushing Naga Siren loss, they have got to just be down to the dumps about what's happening right now. But they're not going to give up. They're not tapping out. They're staying in this to the very bitter end. Moonlight Shadow coming in. They would sure love to find a kill right about now. Dire Courier moving forward, just trying to see if they can bait any sort of attacks. But yeah, escape hold their ground. Baby Knight wanted to go get it, finish up his Mjolnir on the Courier. To be able to push up the waves a little bit better and get some more attack speed, but... Yeah, they were pretty keen that something's going on in that secret shop area, and they were right. <laughs> now Imperial, I mean, they're just wadded up. They're going to be sending Ace up onto the high ground. This is a 
death mission. What are you doing, son? He's going to be going in. He's trying to survive. He's going to get Fiends gripped up. They're focusing him down. They've got the BKB rocking on Koikpa, and that's going to be a dead Bristleback. He does have buyback, but look how quickly everyone else starts to fall as soon as their leader is taken out. Everyone just plummeting to the ground. The buybacks are few and far between. Bristleback, you got to come back now or not at all. This is your last chance in the fight. Imperial mounting one last hold. They get everyone back in that they possibly can. The Alka is just walking around looking for something, but Escape, they're playing this one slow and steady. And there's going to be another Burrow Strike back in. If they get a dive back here onto Ace, that could be huge, but they're just going to be going in, trying to focus down. The Sand King on the back line looks like Trixie will be a little unfortunate. Is able to get off the Yules and uh, is able to Burrow Strike back down to the low ground. Blink after him by Baby Knight, but now Baby Knight split off from his herd. He's going to BKB himself up. Cinder and just goes in for that self nightmare. Nice trying to prevent dodge. anything going down, but BKB is still out from Baby Knight. The magic community is a little bit too strong right now. Bane goes down, Gem on deck, and now it looks like Escape. Uh, they still are looking for more. They want to reinitiate there. Trixie lands the Burrow Strike onto Bristleback, but he will be able to run himself back up to the high ground. So Imperial, they do end up holding. They delay the game just a little bit longer. Escape, they lose their Bane, but they have not lost their hope. No, definitely not. They are looking very good. They all are sitting on... Trixie's got 6,500. Yapsoras can finish up his Dagon 5 very soon if he wants to. Era is pretty much 6-slotted. He's got his Eye of Scotty at base if he wants to. Koifa now... He has another Hyperstone on top of a Moonshard. Probably gonna be going for that AC in a bit for him just to be able to get that last minute Tower Siege. Cause that's, I mean, that's all that this is really now at this point. I'm trying to get that last building. Tier 4 has got brought down kind of low during that, uh, that whole little scuffle as well, so. Looking good for escape. Yeah, we're gonna have everyone on Imperial respawning. Bane coming back up in five seconds. So everyone's looking just to reset, go at it, do it again. Roche will be up uh, in just uh, you know two minutes or so. So that's gonna be a very nice objective for Escape to take. And they're not in a huge rush here. They can definitely keep delaying the game as Imperial are cornered into their base uh, and as the mid and top lane are pushing in with the Super Creeps. Yeah, they have multiple cores scaling while Imperial have pretty much, I mean, they've hit their peak. The Alchemist can start changing some items out and becoming a bit a bit stronger. Bristleback, I guess, kind of the same thing, but his items are pretty necessary what he has right now. Clockwork is not a hero that scales anymore with items. Coddle, not really anymore either. He's got his Ags, he's got his four step. Ogre, okay, he can get a Hex, but it's quite a ways away. He's not killing creeps, they're not winning fights. It's not gonna happen. They're not, they're not scaling anymore while Escape, they're still bringing out their last few items and that's going to be where it becomes nearly impossible, if not already impossible, for Imperial to win this game. I don't think it's impossible. I think if they get a full wipe, they can push so incredibly fast, they can just bail out of their base, charge up mid, and go straight for tier fours, but we'll see. Too many buybacks. Everyone's got buybacks on escape. I don't believe, man. <laughs> Imperial have come this far. They're not going to go down without one hell of a fight. And what was that? Was a dire courier that just died, right? I don't know, probably. Yeah, it was yeah. a dire courier with a full heart on it, I believe. Cool. Yeah, that's 5,500 gold. Cool. Just going through Ace. I mean, he's trying his best to save these last later racks. Vampire will get mega. I don't know if they can stand up to the onslaught of damage that's going to be coming at them, as their clear is just a little bit limited. They're going to have to keep their Bristleback and Alchemist constantly focused on taking out creeps, and while they do that, Escape can just waddle in and start smacking on their tier fours. Slowly but surely. Yep, Roshan is going to be up very shortly, and that's going to be something Escape should be looking to keep scouting out. They're going to bring their courier over there, just kind of leave it in the pit. It's going to be their little beacon. You know, I, like well. a, I like how the Dragon Lance is just sitting there as well. Yeah, who cares? Like, was like, yeah, whatever, dude. I don't, you know, I don't, eh, even, I don't need a thousand gold. I already got, I already got plenty. Uh, oh, Rosh comes back up as soon as the courier leaves the pit. I'll see. Just take another voyage back. Faceless Rex is getting some miles here. Yep, he's got the plate mail now picked up too, so like, like I kind of said, uh... He does want to go for the AC on Koikfa, just be able to break that high ground just a little bit easier, but also to counteract the AC that obviously Imperial has. Now, as soon as the push stops, Imperial are going to know exactly what's going down, but can they even leave their base and try to hope to contest this? I don't know. It may be their only shot to stay in this game, but then again, if they leave their base, it's going to be pretty easy for Escape just to sneak back on through to your forum and kill them off for good. It's just so hard for them to team fight. Like they're locked in their base. Uh, Escape has all the vision that they need to be able to watch them moving out. I don't even think they would be able to contest that rush to fight. Their team fight's just not not nearly as good as Escape's anymore. Like with all this, with all this gold going Escape's way. This is the 
slow but inevitable painful death. Sen King going in with the two boot strat, does not want to give up those tranquils just yet. Has the tier two boots to travel, but goddamn, he needs that regen. Yep, Koifa just, you know, taking out this rush. Picks up his Dragon Lance, puts it back on the Courier. Gets rid of his boots, picks up the Aegis, so there we go. No, he's got the, the Bootless Shadow Fiend, he is 6 lot with the Aegis and Dude, stops his Dragon Lance. just slugging around, worst case, he can have the Sand King just four staff in fun places. Yeah, no. Era. Oh, we're moving in here. Veronica goes forward, dumps out some damage. Has Imperial clench a little bit, but they're still in it. They're still holding tight. Ethereal Dagon 5 and Marana, he can almost actually burst down the Alchemist before it, before it even gets the BKB off. That's terrifying. Well, that's just thoroughly disgusting. Yeah, I mean... Yapsor almost surpassing his Juggernaut in net worth. Oh, smoke. Coming in, Escape looking to make the sneaky sneak play. You look them, they're drawn up onto this top lane. I think Imperial are going to know something's going down because all of a sudden there's a moment of silence, which is a terrifying thing. 65 minutes in, there's the Burrow Strike onto the Alchemist. We'll see if that Dagon can do as much damage as he said. He's getting low, he's going down. Rise, similar story. He hits the deck. Buyback on the Alchemist. Ace is moving forward. He's got the Shiva's Guard. This Trixie binds himself some time. Looks like he's trying to do whatever he can. He Burrow Strikes himself to safety. And now, oh my, this is not looking good. Imperial, oh, they get the dieback on the the Alchemist, this is not looking great. There's gonna be a respawn back from the Shadow Feed era. He's getting low, he eats up a cheese. He buys himself more time in this match. And now Ace, he's gonna be slowed down. He's broken, Arrow slides on through from the Marana. Yapsor looking to keep going forward. Oh, it's all looking bad here. Under the tier fours, everyone's starting to fall. And now Koifa, he's wailing on him. It's not looking great. Imperial, they've got one shot left. It's down to the Ogre, the Clockwork, and half a Bristleback. He's spraying out goo left and right, but he's gonna go ahead and get Ghost Scepter. Yapsor, He's running for his life there. The Dagon comes in, and it's a triple kill for Yapsor. There's no buyback on the Bristle, none on the Alchemist. And, the and this is going to be GG. Well played. Escape will be moving on to the lower bracket finals, and we do have to bid adieu to Imperial. I'm... Um, wow. I mean, I think that Escape had a lot of fortitude and everything to stay in this game. I think they did a good job of just being able to defend and like seize the opportunities that Imperial gave them, but I, I think that... Imperial are not gonna they're not gonna feel good after that I, I think that they I think they had their timing window 